Hello, I am Wallace, the Polish Toy Guy, and today I want to show you something very special to me as a long-time fan of the Macross franchise. The unboxing of the recently released DX Chugokan replica of VF-19 Advance. This unit is an upgrade of the famous YF-19 variable fighter from my beloved Macross Plus, and for some reason Kawamori and crew smuggled it into the second Macross Frontier movie for whole three seconds. I'm not sure if that was the intention from the start, but this allowed Bandai, who has the rights to produce toys from Macross Frontier, to legally create a transforming replica of the plane while the license for doing so with Macross Plus units is still in Arcadia's grasp, as I understand it. And I have no problem with that, YF-19 is my favorite VF of all time, and getting a transforming toy of it was one of my biggest collection dreams, very unlikely to be fulfilled with Arcadia's take on the plane and its humongous price tag. So the second I heard this was going to be released, I knew I had to try to get it. So yes, this is going to be strictly an unboxing in which I show you the box, what's inside, and a brief glance at the VF-19 itself. This is not a review, I think I'll need some time to actually learn this toy, so I would like to prepare a review of this toy, a full-fledged one, around the end of July, and I hope I'll actually make it. So we'll start with a quick note of the dimensions of this box, it's pretty big for a toy. As you can see, here it is with the common cola can, and its length is around 36 cm, it's around 25 cm high and 16 cm deep, so when I think about it in terms of comparisons, the first thing that comes to mind is my Soul of Chikokan Big O, who had pretty much the same size here, as you can see, but it's uh, one point half deeper, so we can tell this is going to be packed and packed with parts. Also, it weighs 1.3 kilograms, so once you grab it, you can definitely feel the heft. And I have to say, this is a really, really pretty box. If you know some toys from the period after VF25 renewal version was released, then you are probably feeling at home, but for me, this is a whole new deal. My only other transforming macros toy is Yamato's VF1 S and J. So completely different style. As you can see, it's kind of clean, but also very dynamic and promising adventure and awesomeness. Here we have fully armorized robot mode and jet mode. VF19 Advanced Variable Fighter. As well as the information about all three modes, fighter, gear, walk, batroid, and what's interesting and hard to see at first glance is that inside the VF-19 Advance the word, there's actually a side line art of the fighter jet. It's not really easy to see on camera, but once you see it for the first time, you always know it's there. VF-19, yes, Tamashi Nations, Bandai, and the number for this in DX Jogokin is GE69. On the right flap of the box we have the same information as on the front, with Batroid mode picture on the foreground and in the background the same picture, slightly enlarged and blue. Left flap exactly the same story, only now with Gearwalk mode, seen for the very first time. And we have Fighter mode at the bottom, what a surprise, though now the background is altered, instead of infinite blue we have something that looks like the Vaja home planet, because in the second Frontier movie we saw VF-19 fighting in its orbit. The top is definitely most interesting of these sides, because it combines all three previous and adds descriptions in what is almost convincing English. So let's start with fighter mode, and here we go! Fighter is high mobility form that demonstrates overwhelming speed. Excellent mobility in the atmosphere and in space is demonstrated. Yes. Gearwalk. Gearwalk is between fighter and batroid. It not only slides at high speed on the ground, but also tricky movement in the air is skillful. Yes, almost convincing English. And for batroid, batroid is humanoid form with an emphasis on the melee combat. Various arms can be operated by making good use of the manipulator. And of course, it's the back that exposes all of the goodies of this toy, and it's not even showing everything that's inside. 
Of course, we have all of the three modes with the advanced pack. Yes, advanced pack, because they had to make as much emphasis on that. This is different from YF19 as possible. And yes, here we have Batroid mode without any packs, and I find it kind of amusing. For me, the advanced pack is going to be the bonus, but it looks like here, the fact that you can have a normal, non-advanced pack version is the bonus. Kind of funny. So, let's look at all the windows and see what they got for us. We have cockpit hatch, which opens backwards. We have head, which is not shown, but this panel can go off. Fighter. Gearwalk. Batroid. I wish I could read kanji. We also have effect parts. The pinpoint barrier punch. Very nice addition. Advanced pack, which is basically YF-19's fast pack plus VF-25's boosters. And the last thing they want to show off, the marking design. And I can actually understand why, because this toy has a really impressive amount of decals, warning signs, markings. That's because they actually hired Hidetaka Tenjin, the famous mattress illustrator, to design the pattern, to oversee them. So I really like that this toy includes his handiwork. So that's all for the external box, really pretty one, and now we will take a look inside. And no, there will be no ceremony of cutting the cello tape on the sides. That pleasure was taken away from me by the customs. When this toy was uh, delivered to Poland, they intercepted it, they asked me what's inside. I said it's a toy, but they had to double check. Fortunately, there's nothing wrong with what's inside. I also checked. So, yeah, it's not definitely a virgin unboxing, but everything's still intact, so I think the impression will be still preserved. When I inspected the toy, I went with this flap, so now let's repeat this. Like so. It goes out really easily. Now let's pull this this way. Open the smaller flaps. And you can see already we have a layer of styrofoam with the fighter itself and we have two plastic trays of accessories. So now let's take all of this out, like so. Oh, and the uh, trays with the accessories came out first, so let's attend to them first. So here we have the manual first, it looks really nice. It's a copy of the front of the box. I'll open it in a moment, and now we have two trays of accessories, which are designed in a way that they interlock to both take less space in the box and to stay stable when you move them around. So on the first tray we have the advanced pack in all of its glory, we also have three smaller bits for the pinpoint barrier punch, and we have the spare cover for the neck of the gearwalk mode, and over here we have all of the bits that make the base stand, how you want to call it. We have the standard for Macros uh, DX Chogokin's SMS shaped base. We have the arm. We have various adapters to transform the base between fighter, gearwalk and batroid modes. And a novelty for VF19 is that we also have two customized Tamashi stage bases along with arms and claws to support the advanced pack boosters while in robot mode. This is because the boosters are attached to wings which are connected to the batroid legs only through a small wing joint. So if you want to put them at the angle that you desire, it's very likely that after short times the angle would be lost because of the weight of the boosters and these are designed to counter this. So you choose the angle that you want to have the boosters with the wings and then you put these under so that there's no actual stress, no uh, weight uh, taking down the wings, stressing the joint. So I think that's a nice idea and if you prefer to use your VF-19 in fighter or gearwalk mode where these are not required, you can simply use them for your other action figures. And now we are finally getting to the main attraction, which is only one layer of cardboard away. So we take this up, it's cello taped on all sides, I decided to keep it here so it's actually sort of a flap. And yes, here is VF-19, and not only that, we also have the gun port, which I'll try to take out in now. Yes, we have the gun port. We also have a smaller baggie with the alternate hands and Isamu Dyson over here. We also have a 
the main bit for the pinpoint barrier punch and over here we have VF19 so to take it out we have to remove this little block of styrofoam remove this blister that protects it and now we take it out like so it works kind of nicely and it's inside this foil baggie and I'll take it out in a moment but even now in my hand in this state this is very, very promising. And now we have VF19 Advance without the foil protective bag. And it looks really, really great, even in transport mode, which as you can see is almost cruise mode. So now let's bring it to full cruise mode, lifting the canards up, lifting the tail fins up a bit. And now we have the full cruise mode. Yes. And now we will go to full fight mode. So we complete the rotation of the tail fins. And uh, for this one, I already had a peek at the manual. So now let's adjust the wings in the way I think they should be, like so. And we repeat this action over here. And the really nice surprise over here is that this hinge is die cast. So this won't break easily. Really happy that they made this choice like so and now we have the full fight mode and a oh, really really fantastic look I was looking forward to something like this ever since I first had in my hands the original Yamato's 1 to 60th scale YF19 over six years ago since then I really wanted to have my own version of this fighter be it VF or YF and at first glance, I am really, really pleased with what I see. And as you can see, the engine covers are still in. And beneath we have a pretty nice looking, how do you call it, fuselage on the carriage. I'm no fighter expert, but it looks pretty clean. And yes, we have all of these Hidetaka Tenjin made decals. This looks really real for something that comes from science fiction. It's just gorgeous to look at. It doesn't feel really fragile right now, but that's because I'm keeping a safe grip on it. I'm not going to test how this works against a simple fall to the ground test. No way. I am happy with what I have right now. It really looks fantastic. And I hope to give you bigger coverage of this soon. So here's the manual and it's really great. Printed on high quality paper and its color both outside and inside, which is fantastic. And right at the start we have some basic information about I Samu Dyson, about the manufacturer, Shinsei Industries, and VF19 itself. Ah, uh, this one. One of three seconds of this thing's appearance in the whole movie. And here we have a list of parts that are inside, so we always know what's missing. And later on, we have a very nice, detailed instruction how to transform VF19 between all three modes in both directions. Really great. It's like, it's uh, kind of reminds me of master grade manuals for model kits, but this is one level up. We have a combination of actual pictures and illustrations with descriptions in Japanese to aid us in the transformation. And if someone does not read Japanese, do not worry. Bandai placed a motion video instruction how to transform VF19 on the official YouTube page. I will probably link it during the review stage or even now, who knows. It's really nice, looks very professional, looks very friendly. So looking at things like this, I may not be as scared of the transformation process as I thought I would be when I first saw the set video. Looks really great. And here at the end we have, well, some more illustrations, also instructions how to apply the advanced pack. So yeah, it's all that you would expect from a manual, very good manual. So, at 5 minutes out of the box, I am super happy to have VF19 Advance from DX Chogokin in my collection. But will I be still super happy after some time spent with it? Only one way to find out, and I hope that once the time comes, you will be with me to see the whole review of this toy. Until then, stay well. Thank you for watching.